Hello everyone, welcome back to OCD Recovery. Today I have uh, another basically saga onto the video I did, I believe yesterday, which was called 10 Quotes by Dr. Albert Ellis. I talked about how some of them can relate to OCD uh, and how they just relate to unconditional self-life and other acceptance and getting under our fears. Today I'm gonna do another one called 10 Quotes by Dr. Viktor Frankl, but more so how they can help change our perspectives about life. Because Man's Search for Meaning, which is a book on the reading list, is really about looking at the, the suffering that they went through at Auschwitz and how what we can take away from that and really start to perspectively shift our belief system on that we can handle a lot more than we can. And that is a vital part of the recovery journey. So not everything I agree with, I mean, you're not going to agree with someone 100% anyway, but not everything I agree with with Viktor Frankl, but I went through a lot of quotes and these are the 10 that I really thought stood out to me. Some were in the book, some were just quotes he said. But before we go any further, you can please subscribe down below. Again, great videos going up all the time. Different moderators, fears, how to get under those fears, our experiences, and just different stuff that's not really talked about a lot, like existential, existential OCD fears, uh, somatic OCD fears, or hyper-awareness fears, uh, why people feel treatment resistant, and stuff like that. So, quote number one. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change our change ourselves. Now, this is vital. Now, there's a lot of situations, if you're talking about a past situation, you can't change that. And OCD loves thriving on that. So some of these need a little bit fine tuning on the explanation about how it relates to the OCD recovery journey. So there are people out there still who use psychoanalysis uh, and psychodynamic therapy as a main form of therapy for OCD recovery. And what people don't understand is you can't change your past. And OCD, because we have an anxiety disorder, it makes you really want to dive into that past and look for certainty. Uh, psychoanalysis, which was founded by Sigmund Freud, can have some great benefits and insights, but it's typically not very good for an OCD sufferer. There's a lot of people anecdotally who are left stuck because they're trying to figure out something in their past and they never can figure it out instead of changing what we can change now. So what you have right now, and it's, the next quote on here, so I'm kind of going to transition into this quote, is your response. Uh, if something happens that you believe makes you frustrated, uh, and it's remember, it's not the primary factor of what's making you frustrated, your belief system right now, which is built up from cultural beliefs, environmental background, family backgrounds, genetics, viewpoints, experience, everything leading to your beliefs right now. So some of it can be on autopilot. Again, I always talk about Sam Harris's topics on free will. If we have it or not, it's a really good topic to look at. But this transition into number two. Between the stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. And our response is where the growth and our freedom happens. Now, this isn't going to happen right away. This is going to take some time for this to happen and people will, the thing is with OCD sufferers, we think very black and white and we want things right now. The reality is, is we can't have things right now. As much as we want them to happen right now, we cannot have them right now. It would be really, really nice if we could. This is why we all try to force recovery at some point. A lot of us will have actually ERP exposure response prevention turn into a compulsion, which is not really well known. People can chase exposures. There comes a point in time where exposures basically can't really go any further and you have to look at the core fear. This happened to me, this happened to Oliver, this happened to Jade, happened to a lot of people, happened to Kirsty and stuff like that. So you do have the control right now to delay a response as uncomfortable as it is. Now I'm telling you with some of the major anger rationalities I have, it was super uncomfortable, super uncomfortable because I was so conditioned to just responding like that, instantaneous. OCD loves immediate action right now. Rob the post on that today, which is tremendous. Number three, everything can be taken from a human. A lot of these say man, but I'm going to change it to human because it's for men and women. Everything can be taken from a human, but one thing, the last of human freedoms is the choice of one's attitude in any given circumstance. And that's something that's, sorry, a comment just went up. And that kind of plays into the last one as well. So the attitude we have right now, we can work on changing that. Again, you're not gonna change your attitude right away. A lot of times it's gonna feel like it's faking it. I've heard a lot of people in the OC community talk about this, and I think there is major validity to this. 
Uh, we see a lot of uh, sur superficial social media stuff. You know, as I always say, if you see a post that says, think positive, uh, you're going to get uh, 5,000 likes, 500,000 likes, a million likes, especially if it's someone from millions of followers. And yes, thinking positive and a positive mindset has a really great benefit to changing the belief system down the road, but it's much more in depth than just thinking positive. There's much more to the recovery journey. Remember, these quotes are correlated to the OCD recovery journey and also certain things in life that could be beneficial for all of us. So number four, this is a really good one. I had to think about this for a while before I posted this one because I wasn't quite sure if I agreed with all of it. So happiness must happen. And the same holds true for success. We, we know that happiness doesn't need to happen. We would prefer to be happiness, happy, but and to prefer to have success. But I like the end of it. You let it happen by not caring about it. That is, happiness is a moving target. We have a society that believes in this, this superficial realm of happiness, that we're always supposed to be happier. We have these dogmatic views that people need to be happy in cer certain situations. You must feel a certain way in a certain situations. Brianna's video today talking about sleep is tremendous and correlates with this absolutely beautifully. The more you direly need something, the less you get. I have friends to go back to what her video was on was on insomnia and sleep problems. Now we know with OCD recovery and OCD sufferers, we have a disorder, so we're really looking for certainty. But I have friends that do not have mental health outward problems and direly need for certainty. Lights are off at a certain time, blue light blocking glasses, and they probably don't sleep as well as they think they do, which is okay, you know? But we look for certainty in everything we do. Humans love comfort and humans love certainty. Number five. So, again, man's search for meaning is, in his belief, with logotherapy, what he created, is that a meaning in life, I can't remember the quote, I always forget it on the on when I'm doing these videos. I think it's a person with can withstand any how when they have a meaning. It's something like that. If you have a meaning in life, for a lot of people, you can withstand a lot of, of suffering. This is how, if you read the book, Man's Search for Meaning, which is on the reading list, I highly recommend it. It's a New York Times bestseller. I have friends who have read this book. It's helped prospectively change their lives and they do not have OCD. But we are have very low frustration tolerance. You know, I can't stand it. We're, uh, this is awful over little things, like your coffee comes in the wrong size. And you don't think that does a lot, but over time to your psychology, that builds a lot of subconscious beliefs. It's like, it's like putting a tack in the wall and then you have a wall full of tacks. And this is why negativity can be a habit for a lot of people because they're conditioned over time, their beliefs, their cultural experiences, everything that leads them to who they are in that moment, at that moment in time. The moment you are right now is everything prior to this moment leading up to this. I really do believe that. So the quote is, even more people today have the means to live. Because remember, think about back in you know Auschwitz time, uh, in the early 40s, not the best time to be alive for a lot of people, but no meaning to live for. So this is what he saw. He saw people were alive and they, a lot of, what do we see? This is just a, some, some data. Everyone that knows that likes watching my videos knows I'm a data person. People who retire early, and don't have a meaning, don't, when they interview them, they don't have the most fulfillment because they, they don't have a meaning in life anymore. We see this a lot with police officers, with firefighters. This doesn't mean that you can't have a, you know, a content life with zero meaning. Albert Ellis has talked about this. I remember he said you could have no talents or poor talents, no abilities, and still accept yourself. He said it would be damn frustrating, but you could still find a way with every mishappening in your life. You could still find a way. And that's really important. Number six, I love this one. This one doesn't really have to do, it does. It does have to do with the process of recovery, but I do the unpleasant tasks before the pleasant tasks. OCD recovery requires persistence, grit, dedication, lots of ups and downs, especially in the chronic format. If you're suffering how I was, where it's every second of every single day for over a year, two years, Oliver, Jade, Kirsty, everyone, all the moderators, everyone I've talked to who's recovered, it 100%
When you're looking at recovery, there's certain things that have been shown to be beneficial. Having a good lifestyle habit. Doing things you don't always want to do. I made a post about this where we have live in a society where people say, I don't give an F or I do whatever the F I want. But you can look in the tonage of their voice how little they accept life. Because they believe that they need, they should. I was like this. This is why I'm so well versed in this particular thing. I should be able to do what I want all the time. That's not reality. If you work for someone, sure, you could do whatever you want, but you're going to get fired. So um, I know some people don't like when I bring up the workplace force, but there's some straight, straight validity to that. And we're just talking about that one point. We're not talking about the, uh, the validity of vulnerability or talking about your emotions and stuff like that. We're just talking about the conditional life acceptance and low frustration tolerance that can build when you have these type of thought processes. Just look at the way people say things. That, that's very telling in their actions. So number seven, big one. When a person cannot find meaning, he numbs with pleasure. This is not always the case, but we do see this. Uh, we see people with OCD recovery. It's very hard. We understand that. I totally understand what it's like going through OCD recovery. Um, Rob does. But it's very easy to sit on your phone, you know, instant gratification, blah, 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 and not do the things that we know are going to bring us to recovery. This doesn't mean that you can't be on TikTok. It doesn't mean you can't play video games if you can balance it. I could not play video games in a balanced manner for a long time. I might be able to now, who knows, they're still not coming back. So number eight, if there, is a, if there is a meaning in life at all, then there must be a meaning in suffering. This is a really psychological, I mean, uh, philosophical point. It's why I really like this one. Again, I pondered over this for about five minutes. So if there's a meaning in life, if there's a meaning in life, everything underneath the meaning, underneath life would more than likely have some sort of a meaning in his in his philosophy. Do I agree with that fully? Maybe, maybe not. But you can take meaning from suffering. Now, I need to talk about this for a second. There is zero benefit to having OCD. None. I see videos by people, uh, therapists, coaches, anyone, average shows, the benefits of having OCD. Zero, none, zero. The World Health Organization 15 years ago rated it as the top 10 most debilitating disorders with severe neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's or forms of dementia or Alzheimer's or ALS, aka Lou Gehrig's disease or um, progressive sclerosis diseases or severe malignant cancers. I had it up there, OCD. We didn't have the treatment at the time. We now know that's not the truth. Not the truth. This is why it's a really good time to have OCD if you have it. And dwelling on the past and having self-pity, which Sadie has talked about. I've had self-pity more so in the last part of my journey than the beginning. This is why I actually want to talk about something before going on. A good idea, in my opinion, is to not judge your recovery no matter how good you're feeling. OCD loves that. Rob said to me one time, he was like, man, you jumped on recovery pretty quick. We've all done it. And we were laughing. And, you know, I think there was some very hidden truth to that. And we all do it. So, but suffering could have meaning. The OCD disorder, no benefits. Not even one. It inhibits your life in every way possible it can to put you in a box, to put you in a room, not moving. But the recovery journey, going through hardship and grit, can be one of the most beneficial things to any single person. Number nine. Oh my gosh, th this, I could get this tattooed on my forehead. I wouldn't do that, but I could. No person should judge unless they have themselves in absolute honesty, whether in a similar situation, they be not, they may not have done the same thing. So let's use, as Rob talks about, serial killers, uh, psychopaths and um, sociopaths. Uh, some say there's no difference, but from the stuff I've read, there's differences in the two, but that's completely irrelevant. There goes my nerd self again. So, but when you look at someone and the actions they take right now, why am I making a certain action? Why am I doing these? Why am I doing this video? Well, my belief system has changed because I've worked on it. It wasn't changing in the moment. I'm setting myself up to change my beliefs in the future. Heart, like strong beliefs, not telling myself that I'm the main reason why I, I make myself upset. Other people might contribute, but I'm um, my belief system. I'm not just going to believe that by saying it. Rob uses the spider. You're not going to say, I'm not afraid of spiders. I'm not afraid. Your brain thinks you're afraid of spiders. My brain still thought that other people were the primary aspect of why I was angry. This is why Sam Harris's free will talks can really blend in with this in Albert Ellis, unconditional self-life and other acceptance. So, which is really, really cool. But when we talk about serial killers, it's so easy to write someone off. And I understand why. Totally understand, especially if you're a victim of something or your family member's a victim. 
no one is taking away the, the validity of what happened to you. But I do think it's important to talk about that some of these people have certain, whatever the reason why they do that, if we had, if we were them, we would probably do the same thing. That's the moral of the story. And that's really important to look at. Because unconditional other acceptance, and I'm going to transition this because there's only one more point left. I'm doing a video called, Anger, and Albert Ellis made big points on this. Anger is the one emotion that nobody wants to give up. And it has minimal benefit. Min minimal. Sometimes it could have some benefit. Very minimal in the way that humans use it in the context. You know, get angry, get pumped up for a gym set, me and Rob say. But that's not how people do it. People use it in a conditional manner to make other people believe that they have to listen to them. Number 10. This is a really good one. What is to give light must endure burning? I'll say it again. What is to give light must endure burning? So if you've noticed the difference between these 10 quotes and the quotes from Ellis, um, they both have their benefits, but... This is a very philosophical quote. That's why it doesn't all fully relate to OCD, but it's important to look at other things. We can get so dogmatic about certain things, but it's good to talk about other things. Oliver really put that into me. You know, he's like, hey, just read some other stuff. I know you love, you know, the reading list. I know you love the works by Ellis. I've read multiple Ellis books that are not on the reading list. Um, and I'm a big psychology guy. So, but it's good to read other things, even if you don't agree. You're not supposed to agree with everything. You know, if we agree with everything and the same, everyone thought the same way, life would be pretty damn boring. But again, what is to give light must endure burning. In order to reach OCD recovery in the way that most people want it, the absence of chronic anxiety, the absence of chronic shame, guilt, all that, we more than likely need to go through some suffering. And more than we want to. And that's okay. I think it's a really important point to, end, uh, point to end on. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe down below. So just to give you a couple, because I got about three minutes left before I hit 20 minutes. And then when I hit 20 minutes, I have to send a video in two parts and then Moment yells at me. So I like to keep it in under 20 minutes. But um, Moment's a great guy. So I got a video coming out about anger, specifically about anger, because I got a lot of angry comments about me about anger. I'm gonna do a really good video about unconditional other acceptance. I'm gonna do much more videos on somatic OCD. Very, very specific. And I'm going to do a video on unconditional other um, unconditional life acceptance and why some people don't seem to grasp it and, and really what's holding us back, which kind of caters into the video I did a couple days ago. Uh, if you have any video ideas, uh, please let me know. If you see the comments, a guy who hikes, that's my new username. So if you're like, who is this person? I'm a guy who likes to hike. So that's my username. Uh, again, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.